Welcome. This module describes how to think strategically about external environments, how an organization, a company, a firm, thinks about the world in which, outside of the boundaries of their organization, in which they have to compete and where they act. This is the first of several different uh, short lectures that describe how this external analysis, situational analysis, occurs in organizations. And we'll focus this first lecture on what is it that out there in the world, in the ecosystem, that organizations have to think about and have to worry about. How do they understand their competition? How do they understand their marketplace? Where they get their resources? How they get their pricing? How they get their employees? All of those kinds of things. That's what we'll talk about when we, dis when we explore this, in this first lecture, the external awareness, enhancing the ability to develop this idea of what's out there for us to understand and, and, and work through. Uh, this module will think about the external environment. We put this in the context of the broader strategic process. Later, we'll have the next module, next broad module of multiple lectures that talks about how we look inside of ourselves as an organization and find out our resources. Then how do you compare those, what's out there in the world, the external environment with what you have to offer, internal capabilities, develop some strategies, think about some initiatives that you can do, and then ultimately decide which of them you'll take forward. So this one, external environment, we'll talk about how we look outside at the world itself, the big environment outside of our boundaries, where we have to compete in order to succeed. Companies in the center of this chart, and by the way, as a digression, this information is also in your textbook. So you can look and, uh, and, and review some of this material. Um, the company is here in the center. It has to deal with its suppliers, where it gets all the things that it needs in order to make its wor operation work. It has to look at what, where it um, gets, it, how rivals are in, involved in this thing, how you compete with other customers, the competition, the competitive environment. Other companies that enter in as new entrants, you have to worry about your customers or the buyers, what they want and how they want it, what they, the sorts of things that they do. And of course, you have to worry about customers deciding to buy something like what you have, but not exactly what you have. In other words, a substitute. All of this dynamic, this core dynamic of situating yourself among, um, yourself among all these various stakeholders and partners occurs in this broader context of all these things that are outside the organization or even outside and impacting the overall ecosystem. Those we can think of in seven broad categories of things on that prior figure. Demographics, who are the people? Not only your customers that you have to deal with, their cultural backgrounds, their experience, their, their economic position, how much money they have, what their tastes are, but also in terms of the employees that come in. What are they like? What sort of demographics define them? What sort of social forces are involved? What cultural values? What sort of morality, lifestyle changes affecting your customers, but also your employees? Also the supplier employees, and even people that you deal with from a regulatory and government environment. These various social forces that make the situation of strategic assessment of the environment so complex. We have political and regulatory environments. What is it that the politicians are saying? What sorts of laws are being passed? What regulations do I have to adhere to? What kind of reporting requirements? Those sorts of things. There's the natural environment. You're, you have needs. You buy things. You buy energy. You buy raw materials. And many of those depend sometimes on the weather, on pricing. You're, if you're making a food product and you buy grains or anything like that, it depends a lot on the weather, how good the crop is, what the commodity prices are. You have to worry about the technology, what the latest technological advances are, whether that gives you competitors an advantage if they have better technology or how you can use technology better, or perhaps your product or service might even be going obsolete because of technology issues. There are global forces you have to deal with in terms of political ones, but also large-scale economic changes like the rise of China, for example, and uh, other sorts of developing countries, what's happening with, um, in, in uh, for example, Brazil or even in the developing world. And then there's the general economic ebb and flow. Are we in a recession? Are we in ex expansion, contraction? Is it US? Is it Europe? Is it the whole world? All of those various issues impact those items that we described before, making it very difficult 
to develop and understand what the external environment is about. We want to understand how attractive it is for us. We want to understand what sort of competition in, in, that we have to deal with. Or is, is it going to be price competition? Is it in innovation the greatest thing or the newest thing where people compete? What other factors are changing the way we think and what we have to deal with? The kinds of product and services people want. What market positions people are in? Are we in a strong position? Are we the market leader? Are we trying to establish a beachhead and grow a market position as we go forward? What sort of um, strategic moves other players are likely to make? Are they going to come up with a new product that will make us have a weakness on our product front? What moves can we make as well as to respond? We'll talk about later. Uh, what are the key factors that people are competing on? Are they trying to drive down the price? Is my, I had a price, we've had a consistent pricing in the industry for a long time, but you now have a major player that's trying to make a strategic move of lowering prices, and that could lower my price, which could really hurt me if I have a weak cost position, relatively speaking. And then, generally, is this industry in which my business is competing an attractive one, where I can grow and continue to sustain myself? Or do I have to start making plans for the long term to find new areas and new industries where I can develop? And we'll actually get to that later when we talk about corporate strategy. In the business strategy, you're in an industry and you're trying to understand how you compete in all of these various areas. In our next lecture, next series of lectures in this module, we'll talk about some models people use to help think about how the business works, how the external environment is impacting my strategy. We'll talk about some of those. Next, on the next lecture, we'll start talking about the five forces model, one of the most powerful um, conceptual tools people use. And it's very common language in business to talk about the five forces model when you think about strategic decision making. That's what we'll deal with next. So we'll see you in the next lecture.